I'm Mike. I'm Max. My name's Kat. I'm Lola. We are the Wilsons. Yes, and this is how the Wilsons saved the world. God, look at the time. We're only supposed to drop off our bags for the trip, get some food and come home. Your parents will be worried. Yeah, our downfall was deciding to buy tea bags. <sighs> Fair trade or organic. Fair trade or organic. An hour you stood there dithering on the horns of an ethical dilemma. Yes. What about you? You were paralysed with terror over the Mange too. Local or supporting developing nations. Should we go local? Should we support developing nations? Well, thank God we're doing something unequivocally good this weekend. Mm, I wouldn't feel too smug. My parents are in our house right now. Remember, my mother can frack the confidence right out of you. <laughs> Michael, Maxine. Thanks so much for looking after the girls, Jennifer. What is it you're doing again? Rinsing off puffins? No. Maxine's got an old friend in the SAS. Oh, you're in the armed forces, Maxine. Well, that explains your taste for shapeless khaki. <laughs> um, SAS is Surfers Against Sewage. They're an environmental group who protest pollution. An old friend of mine has organised a beach clean-up in Cornwall. All the plastic that's destroying our coastlines. Goodness, that sounds admirable. Some people would think about cleaning up closer to home first. What is that? <laughs> well, I mean, your house is a filthy pigsty. Right, well, usually, Jennifer, your digs are sort of more understated, a bit more passive-aggressive. I know, dear, but you're going away tomorrow. I didn't want to be subtle and risk you missing it. <laughs> Mum, there's this grey seal called Binky who lives at the beach. Anyway, she's had to be rushed to an animal hospital. They found five pounds of plastic rubbish in her stomach. It's awful. Oh, I know how bad plastic is. That's why I always throw it in the bin immediately. <laughs> Mum, you should recycle. There's only one bottle. Yeah, but what if 10,000 people said that? Oh, you're right. There simply isn't enough room in our bin. We've only got a Brabantia 6. <laughs> the volunteers are cleaning the beach up so that Binky can come back for mating season. She's become a real cause celebre. Yeah, cause celebre. <laughs> Cause, cause celeb, like... Hello. Oh. Hi, Dad. Son. Dad, I just wanted to say, it really means the world to me that you're spending time with the girls, you know? I remember when Grandpops died, and I really felt I'd missed out on that special bond with him. Can we eat dinner now? <laughs> well, it's always lovely to have these chats with you, Dad. I've got a surprise. I've cooked a farewell meal for the family. For the whole family, like one meal, us and the girls. You cook for everyone, like all of us, all, all at the same time? I'm sure that'll be fine. <laughs> Here we go, everyone. Roast lamb, roast potatoes, buttered broccoli. Who wants what? What is it, Mimo? It's lamb, Lola. Lamb. Like a lamb. <laughs> yes, lamb. I'll have some lamb. As in lamb. From a lamb. Lola's vegan, Mum. Right, I'll do her some chicken then, shall I? <laughs> Since I saw Bay pig in the city, I won't eat anything with a face. I'd love a bit of lamb. <laughs> vegan means no meat or dairy, Jennifer. Aren't you all Vulcan? Vegan. <laughs> yeah. Well, mostly. So you don't eat meat? Well, meat's terrible for the environment, so yeah, we try hard not to. It's easy not to eat meat, Dad. The best way to do it mm. is not to eat it. <laughs> Next day, the same thing, and so on. Right. Lola, we don't make fun of people for trying their best. Kat and Lola have never eaten bacon or been inside a McDonald's. Well, I, I did use the hope that they'd get divorced so that Dad would take us there for a weekend treat. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> we try to be mindful about meat. We, we think about it a lot before we eat it. Me too. <laughs> Lovely lamb. Have some vegetables, Lola. They've all got butter on. It's everywhere. Potatoes? They don't have a face. I mean, they sometimes have eyes, but I don't think they cry or anything. She's joking, Lola. You can have potatoes. I, I might have a spot with my lamb. Max, no moral objections to broccoli? No, I just don't like it. I'll, I'll boil some eggs. Eggs are evil, Mum. They're from our chickens. We keep chickens as slaves and we steal their unborn babies. <laughs> they're not slaves, they're pets. Useful egg-pooing pets. <laughs> Michael, you used to love my roast dinners. Ah, well, yes, Mum, but I'm three months into restoring my gut flora. The intestinal biome is at a very delicate stage. Oh, my God. So, I will be having this. Sauerkraut. Oh, oh God! God. Oh, dear. God, what is 
is that? It is fermented vegetables. I eat probiotic now. Healthy bacteria, healthy mind. My gut biome is its own ecosystem. It's rather like the Eden Project. Well, it's, it's got a visitor centre and the locals wish it wasn't there. <laughs> we used to put conkers in vinegar at Harrow. Conkers Evans, ginger lad, smashing chap. <laughs> of the environment now, of course. So, potato for Lola, egg for Max, rotting garden waste for Michael. Uh, I, I, I'll help myself to a... What are you doing? Uh, I'm Instagramming my dinner. There's nothing on your plate but a single peppercorn. <laughs> yeah, hashtag clean eating. Haven't you heard of it? It's the latest thing. She's trying to impress the cool girls at school. Remember when all the cool kids did drugs? Now they take photos of quinoa. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't like you being on a diet, Kat. Duh, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. We only eat pure foods approved by Gwyneth Paltrow and the skinniest, shiny-haired food bloggers. All hail the kale. You're only clean eating because your friends are. You're such a sheep. Bah! Oh, I shouldn't have said bah! Like that poor lamb. Lola, don't meat shame people. Yeah, just be positive about the food you choose to eat, okay, Lola? Okay. Mimo, how do you get these lovely potatoes so crunchy? Goose fat. <laughs> goose fat. Mm. Like fat from a goose. Cat, I don't care what bloggers say. You've got to eat more than a peppercorn and a glass of tap water. Tap water? I hope it's been through my carbon filter. Yeah, just claret for me. I read a piece in the Telegraph that says tap water now has so much oestrogen in it that we'll soon all grow breasts. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. You should give that a try, Max. <laughs> Shut up, Lola. Girls, stop shouting. Ba lamb ba. Oh, I think my sauerkraut might have turned. Where would you even know? <laughs> oh, dear God, are your family meal times always like this? Like what? Right. Never mind. I'll just bring out the pudding. Who wants spotted dick and custard? I'm oh, afraid no. my God, I am not I'll help with a spotted dick. <laughs> I am not eating custard. It is cellulite in a tin. Jog on. Cat, cellulite is a myth perpetuated by the beauty industry. How could you eat that? What problem could you possibly have with spotted dick, Lola? What animal did it come from? <laughs> it's so spotty. Is it off a leopard? <laughs> Ah, dinner was nice. <laughs> kind of mum to cook. I've just realised our family is mad. We've sent us mad. I know, we've been so anxious that our food's fair trade, organic, ethical, sustainably farmed, supports developing nations, but is also local and nutritious. Do you think the girls even know that some food is meant to be nice? We're too anxious about food now. We've basically been gift-wrapping eating disorders and giving them to the kids. Are we... Bad people. Oh, I don't know about bad, but we're definitely those people. What people? Well, you know, the people who bring their own things in Tupperware to dinner parties and say, don't mind me. <laughs> I hate us. I, I do think it's great that Lola cares about animal rights, but it's upsetting her. You know how sensitive she is? Yeah, she's even scared of clowns. Well, no, we just told her that she was scared of clowns so she wouldn't want to go to McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> Cat's got an eating obsession. It's a, it's a bit culty, isn't it? Yeah, those girls all refused to do their maths homework on the basis it involved a pie chart. <laughs> Mike, what if we're not gluten intolerant? Max, don't be hysterical. We got a full clinical diagnosis. Well, I don't think that boy behind the counter at Holland and Barrett was qualified to make that. <laughs> oh my God! I mean, say what you like about my parents. Can not I? like that. <laughs> They don't have this level of food anxiety. Your parents, they're more mindful about food than we'll ever be. It's rationing, you see. My mum's from the generation that could make a chicken last a week and save the gravy to paint her legs for a night jitterbugging with an American soldier in an Anderson shelter. Your mum was born in 1953. Yeah, she's a very strange woman. Yeah, but she eats normally, like no anxieties. I tell you what, I've got an idea. We're going away for a few days. Why don't we let my parents feed the kids whatever they want? You mean? Yeah. Normal, traditional food, a bit of everything in moderation. It's the one food fad we have never tried. <laughs> well, that's not a bad idea. Come on, then. Let's do it. Love, could you just... Maybe could you have a shower? Because you smell like a pickled egg. <laughs> Hello, Frankie. We're just getting ready to leave for Cornwall. 
Hello, Max. It's about the sleepover tomorrow night. Has Cat got her own dream catcher, or will she need one of ours? <laughs> Cat! It's brilliant that Ellie's invited Cat to her sleepover. She's very excited. Is your, uh, is your Ellie doing this clean eating thing? Well, they seem very committed. I'm making popcorn broccoli, and as a treat, I got the girls some dark chocolate. Oh, chocolate, lovely. Oh, is it the stuff Gwyneth approves of? 98% cocoa solids. Oh, the posh chocolate that's so bitter it turns your mouth inside out. <laughs> Just a square per girl before bed. It's so pure. Single origin from Guatemala. So like our cleaner. <laughs> Well, that all sounds great, Frankie. I'll send our cat over later with a spare dream catcher. <laughs> Sleep over with your new pals, cat, yeah? In my day, we do our hair, talk about boys. Oh, yeah, same. We've got some quartz, and we're going to do some, like, binding spells to get rid of our psychic vampires and patriarchal energy. <laughs> <laughs> Teenagers. They really are crap these days. <laughs> I found a lilt can. Do you remember lilt? George, did Don't you do the Right, sorry. <laughs> I found a caramac wrapper earlier. What were they even about? Even though we're wading through rotting old carrier bags and dead jellyfish, I have to say I'm having a brilliant time. <sighs> Me too. We are unequivocally being excellent people cleaning up this beach, getting air in our lungs. Should we treat ourselves to a pasty? A pasty's fermented. Oh, we could get one of the really old ones from a petrol station. <laughs> Now, who do I have to see about getting more bin bags? Well, look for Marlin. He's the 50-year-old with no top on. His dreadlocks are older than the concept of cultural appropriation. <laughs> Does Marlin own any shirts? Marlin don't own nothing. Oh! <laughs> Marlin, hello. You look really well. Think about it. Who owns the sea? Mm, Thames Water? <laughs> National Trust, Rick Stein, Duke of Westminster. Is it France? <laughs> You know, I Max, been years. I met you on that woman's march, remember? What a beautiful day that was. Well, that was years ago. I was 22. I know. This dreadlock is older than you. <laughs> you haven't changed at all, Marlin. Still living in that old ice cream van? No. I live in a tree now. <laughs> Moved to the forest when they were going to build that bypass, and I just felt closer to nature. Wow, that really worked. You stopped the bypass. Yep. It's just us and the badgers now. Zero impact. We try to live zero impact. I drive a Nissan Leaf. Do you, Mike? Or does it drive you? Whoa. <laughs> right, I'm gonna make a wishing tree from all these old cola bottles. Make dreams from detritus. And guys, if you uh, see what looks like a jellyfish before you pick it up, check to see it's got a knot in the end. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's great. I know, right? He gets stuff done. You know carrier bag waste has gone down 85%. Marlin told me it was his idea to make them 5p. Wow. If I'd met him on a woman's march, I'd have married him. <laughs> I believe that. Wishing trees. Is there anything he can't do? Play the bongos. But he's going to do it anyway. In about half an hour when the sun goes down and we all sit around the campfire with a well-earned organic beer. Bam! Bongo time. I quite like bongos. Of course you do. <laughs> Hi, Mum. So just letting you know it's all fine here. We've just finished lunch. Lola and I are spending the afternoon making gingerbread men. Oh, wow. Is Lola eating something with a face? Or am I not allowed to say that? I suppose I should call them gender-fluid persons of petition extraction. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, don't worry. Mum's doing her Richard Littlejohn stand-up routine. <laughs> OK, Mum, if the girls are eating well and not stressing about food, that is great. Thank you. Bye. Right, last one to find three Barbies head buys the beer. <laughs> Hello, Lola. Everything all right? I shouted at a man today for wearing leather shoes and also for enslaving a horse. Goodness. He seemed OK about it, but I think I might be on the police watch list now. <laughs> Lola, you do seem to be taking all this very seriously. Does meat make you feel sad, Pop Pop? Well, when there isn't any. <laughs> I just don't understand how anyone could eat meat. Have you really never had bacon? Why do people eat it? Well, because bacon tastes nice. It's like licking pink salt from an angel's armpit. <laughs> I don't understand. I like people, but I hate some of the things they do. Well, you can't understand someone until you've walked a mile in their shoes. Are the shoes leather? 
<laughs> My point is, this is clearly upsetting you. If it's confusing you so much, why not try some? See why people like it. Mm, our meat is very good. We've got this little man. Does he fit in the frying pan? <laughs> I mean, our butcher. His meat is organic, fair trade, local. All the lofty things. <laughs> Tell you what. I'll not eat my bacon. Then you can try it, see what the fuss is about, without compromising your ethics. Oh, you mean like offsetting? If you like. So you can understand. Hmm. Sometimes, mate, if, if a bigger wave is worth riding, you've got to paddle that bit harder. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, but I was asking if there were any more bin bags anywhere. <laughs> That's what I mean, Mike. Think about it. Okay. Right, there's a group of inner city children coming to the cleanup. I'm going to teach them about rock pools and how otters fall asleep holding hands. Catch you later. He's brilliant, isn't he? Yeah, surfing all day and eating foraged forest food. Even when he puts on a cardigan, you can still see his abs. <laughs> <sighs> oh, hello, Mum. How's everything? Good morning, Michael. So, as you said, it was all right. We've let Lola try some bacon. Oh, right. How is she? <laughs> Lola, come off the top of the cupboard and speak to your father, dear. <laughs> How much bacon has she had? Just a few rashers. Bring me more bacon. <laughs> hey, me mom. Oh, is Lola still on top of the wardrobe? Philip's trying to lure her down with a bag of frazzles dipped in pate. <laughs> Great. Well, our family is such a freak show. Catherine, you seem glum. Yeah, I'm nervous about this sleepover tonight. Why? Will there be rave drugs? Uh, no, but all of my friends are doing clean eating. I get it. It's, it's basically the same hippie diet that mum and daddy, but with a 200% smugness filter and more avocados. So why so glum? Because there's so many rules. Like, my friend Rachel Tyler just told me off for eating the wrong sort of purple sprouting broccoli. Like, it's literally like Mean Girls, but with acai seeds. Yes, I think it's acai. Oh, great. Well, no wonder they were laughing at me then. Well, look, it's your choice for our day out today. Where would you like to go? <laughs> The beach is looking amazing. Yep. How's everything at home? I just spoke to your mum. She let Cat choose where they went today. She thought they were going to a theme park. Oh, where did they go? Poundland. <laughs> she calls it Poundland, like Finland. <laughs> your dad thought it was very funny. Oh, no. Did he do the joke? Yep. He went up to all the assistants and he asked how much everything cost. <laughs> Apparently, Cat bought 300 Kit Kats. Kit Kats? But we boycott Nestle products. I know, I know. And I... Look, I haven't eaten a Kit Kat since I was 19, and I can't really remember why. Well, because they're terrible. No, I can't remember why either. I just <laughs> know it in my gut bio. Let, let's leave your guts out of it, yeah? Should we go home, do you think? No. Binky's coming out of the animal hospital tomorrow. Cause célèbre. <laughs> She's a seal. No, I know. It's not fun. Oh, who's on the phone? It's the middle of the night. Oh, hello. Hello, Max. It's Frankie. Is everything all right with the sleepover, Frankie? Not really, Max. I made them a wonderful clean eating meal of raw chard and then... What happened? Then, well, when I went upstairs, they'd stopped doing their goddess ceremony and I found Kat smuggled in a cachet of... what I can only describe as... Kit Kats. <laughs> How many? A lot. Much more than just the personal use. <laughs> I think she's dealing. Right, put her on the phone. Kat, have you been dealing forbidden Kit Kats to your mates? No. I said to them, the first one is free, and if they want any more, then we'll talk payment. Why? <laughs> because I'm just fed up of clean eating. I wanted to try dirty eating, and it's great. Kit Kats are four fingers of filth, and I'm taking these good girls down with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Max, but the girls have gone quite frenzied. Look, can you wait till morning? I'll send Jennifer round. As quick as you can, please, Max. Any one of these girls could be lactose intolerant, and then we face the nightmare scenario of slight Floating. Oh, 
All right, Max, Mike, everything all right? Yeah, I think we'll go home today, Marlin. The beach looks amazing. We really did it. Oh, sure. Didn't realise you were fair weather activists, greenwashers, part-timers. No, we're not. We picked up 11 billion plastic cups and Coke bottles and those stupid Twizzlers for stirring coffee. But I need to go home now and see my kids. Yeah. <clears throat> Me and Tina are thinking about having kids. That's her there. That's your girlfriend? How old is she? 22. Met her on a woman's march. You meet a lot of 22-year-olds on women's marches, Marlin. Mike, between you and me, there's a very fine line between angry and horny. <laughs> Birds, mate, on marches, when they're all riled up and punching the air, pretend you're into women's rights, get them back into the ice cream van, and you can surf that righteous anchor wave right back to freaky sex beach. That is not very respectful to women. The women are all right. Not as good as otters, though, are they? <laughs> oh, you are not very nice. Hello? Oh, it's the postman. Oh, oh, you're not Mrs. Wilson. I like her. No, they're away. Do you have a parcel, my good man? Uh, not today. I was just wondering if you'd lost a small girl. Lola? I saw her running down the streets, chasing a child with a Peppa Pig backpack, trying to lick it. <laughs> From this sleepover. Could you wrangle Lola? She's got loose and she's on a powerful meat bender. <laughs> of course, dear. I'll just have a quick wander around the cheese board, then I'll pop my shoes on. <laughs> Hi, Mum. Everything all right? Hello, Michael. Nothing to worry about, but you might want to pop home. Your father's had a heart attack. What? <laughs> Philip, we're so sorry. Oh, I'm fine. You're not blubbing, are you, son? No. Yes, I am. Oh, we shouldn't have left you to run around after the kids. It was too much for you. No, it's not the children's fault. It's fine. The doc says it's extraordinary it didn't happen sooner. Turns out a full English breakfast, a ploughman's and a full roast dinner plus put and two bottles of claret every day isn't the road to health the adverts would have you believe. Dad, is this the x-ray of your heart? I mean, it's literally encased in a shell of fat. Yes, looks rather like a scotch egg. <laughs> They discussed taking the insulating layer of fat out, but decided probably safer just to leave it there. They're treating it the same way you'd treat asbestos in a school. We thought you two ate so healthily. Dear God, no, I pack it in like Henry VIII. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have had to run around after Lola. It's not like her. Lola, what possessed you to run up and down the street like that? Lola, are you OK? So cold. Someone get her another foil blanket. <laughs> says she'll be fine. She's just never experienced the meat sweats before. She's coming down from a condition they're calling bacon frenzy. I knew things had got bad when I saw Pop Pop's x-ray and wondered for the briefest moments if I could eat his heart. <laughs> okay, love. Well, now you've experimented with bacon, how do you feel? Oh, it was delicious. Undeniably. But I just can't do it ethically. I don't know how to tell you this. But the thing about bacon is, it's made of pig. <laughs> as in babe! As in pig in the city! OK, well, we're proud of you, as long as it doesn't keep making you upset. Mum, I think you're the only one who actually eats sensibly. Yes, as I always say, everything in moderation and the odd vitamin. What are these vitamins? Oh, vitamins, yeah, I'll take some of those. They'll be very good for my gut biome. Yes, the doc mm. says they're for my metabolism. I've been on these little blue ones since 1978. Dexedrine. Jennifer, these are pure speed. These are what punks took to make them more violent. <laughs> Don't be silly. They're fat binders or something. One for breakfast, two at lunch, and six at dinner with a glass of milk. <laughs> so what you're saying is a little bit of what you fancy in a massive dose of amphetamines. <laughs> Cat! Hey, everyone. Pop, Pop, are you OK? I came as soon as the authorities would release me. I've had a pretty heavy grilling. Are you OK? Yeah. Uh, the clean eating girls had an emergency crisis meeting about me bringing a controlled confectionery into a pure food safe space. They're not kicking me out, but they do insist I have some counselling. For eating the food that 90% of teenagers eat all the time? Yeah. I seem to have joined a gang of militants. I hope you haven't fallen out with your friends. Oh, I don't know. It's cool. Everyone thinks I'm a total badass. 
I've got like this tiny dimp of cellulite and they're treating it like a new piercing. I'm like a dangerous outsider now. <laughs> Has anyone learned anything at all? Mm. What? Mike, hmm? your pupils are dilating. Yeah, I think it's mum's vitamins kicking in. Right, I mean, I think the thing is, you know, it's, it's really good to be good, and food's a really great place to start because everyone needs it to eat, don't they? Because it's impossible to be truly ethical in all directions. Really, like, really, when you think about it, it's really hard to be good all the time, isn't it? I mean, also, like, look at Marlon. You know, in one way, he's a great human. In another way, he's a massive tool, isn't he? And everything's flawed in some way, but trying is good, and that's the thing. And everyone, you know, is perfect, aren't they? 100% like that horrible bit of chocolate turns your face inside out. Ugh. Maybe we need some fat and impurities, which is like a metaphor, metaphor, metaphor. Oh, hearts racing now. Mike, 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 calm down. Yeah. We're in a hospital. It's all right. Give me some gloves. I'm going to help with the operations. I came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> Mum, I found the news report on YouTube. Put it on. Put it on. Mm. I'm here on Padstow Beach with Binky the Seal, who has returned home after one surfer single-handedly cleaned the polluted beach. Just doing my bit, lover. Oh, cheeky kid, we did that. Shh, Mum. Binky, who consumed five pounds of plastic waste, has become something of a cause celebre. Cause celebre? He made my juice! Padstow Animal Rescue are releasing Binky into the water. We've been warned to watch out. She's a bit skittish after her ordeal. Don't worry, darling. I have a connection with Mother and Nature's creatures. After eating five pounds of plastic waste and now a human finger, we do have to ask, maybe Binky the seal is a little bit thick. My finger! <laughs> wait, 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 rewind it, rewind it. Yeah, but one thing we can all agree on, watching a Wally get bitten by a seal is never not hilarious. <laughs> Marlin Kit Kat. It's like a normal Kit Kat, but it's got three fingers. <laughs> the Wilson Save the World was written by Marcus Brigstock and Sarah Morgan with thanks to Carrie Quinlan and starred Marcus Brigstock, India Brown, Kerry Godleyman, Mia Jenkins, Vicky Pepperdine, Rupert Van Sittert, Mike Wozniak and me, Shannon Murray. The producer was Julia McKenzie and it was a BBC Studios production. <laughs> Thank you.